So what's up guys, I'm Francis Ray Vido and I'm going to make a video tutorial about trade jewelry. So what is trade jewelry and what is the meaning of the word trade? So let us define what is meant by the word trade. So trade is a quality that makes one person or thing different from another. So the question is, do you think that people who commit crime are physically and mentally abnormal? So let's find out according to the book of Larry Siegel. According to Larry J. Siegel on his book, Criminology, Theories, Patterns, and Typologies, as cited in the chapter 5 of his book, trait theories are made up of biosocial and psychological theories. The primary focus of trait theories is human behavior, and it drives the attachment of aggression, violence, and the tendency to act on impulse or the impulsivity of factors that may are linked to antisocial behavior as opposed to legally defined criminal acts. Biological and Psychological Traits Both biological and psychological traits have been linked to criminal behavior but not as causal linkages. It is the multiple factor approach or the interaction of mental and physical traits with environmental and social factors that either suppress or trigger criminal behavior. The focus is generally on persistent or chronic offenders. Now let's move on to the foundation of biological trait theory. Biological explanation of criminal behavior first became popular during the middle part of the 19th century with the introduction of positivism. So guys, what is mainly about positivism? So positivism rejects the concept of free will. And crime can only be understood if it's studied by scientific method. Human behavior is a function of internal and external forces such like social, biological, psychological, and economic forces. Early positivist. So let's move on to the early positivists. Early positivists included Lombroso, Garofalo, Ferry, and Sheldon. Lombroso believed that certain physical characteristics indicate a criminal nature, such like atavistic anomalies. While Garofalo, certain physical characteristics and psychological characteristics indicate criminal nature, such like prisoner tattooing. Ferry believe in biological, social, and organic factors as a cause of crime and delinquency. For such, for example, forces outside your control. And Sheldon believe in the body types which were susceptible to certain type of delinquent behavior, such like somatotype school. So let's proceed to the first trait theories, the biological or the what we so-called biosocial trait theories. So biosocial trait theories or biological trait theories include the factors, biochemical conditions and crime, neurophysiological conditions and crime, genetics and crime, evolutionary views and crime. So let's first discuss the principles of biosocial trait theory. So it includes the genetic makeup contributes significantly to human behavior. Not all humans are born with equal potential to learn and achieve equipotentiality. No two people are alike or with rare ex exceptions or identical twins, thus the combinations of genetic traits and the environmental produ produces individual human behavior patterns. The question is, how do these principles contrast with social theories? And how a biosocial theories explain learning? Let's find out. So the first biosocial theory factors is biochemical perspective. So the cause of it is crime, especially the violence is a function of diet, 
vitamin intake, hormonal imbalance, or food allergies. And its strengths explain irrational violence shows how the environment interacts with personal traits to influence behavior. Biochemical considerations state that aggression and violence had been linked to diet. Some believe that diet, which is high in sugar and carbohydrates, are culprits. So let's proceed to the second factor of biosocial theory, which is neurological perspectives. So in neurological perspectives, it's cause criminals and delinquents often suffer brain impairment as measured by the EEG or electroencephalograph and attention deficit disorder and minimum brain dysfunction are related to antisocial behavior. So the strengths of neurological perspectives explains irrational violence shows how the environment interacts with personal traits to influence behavior. So let's come up with the word neurological impairment. So let us first define what is neurophysiology. So neurophysiology is the study of brain activity that suggests that physical and brain abnormalities are acquired at the prenatal stage or proof birth delivery trauma. In turn, they control behavior throughout the lifespan. So the questions that may formulate in this neurological impairment is what is the link between brain chemistry and chronic offenders and crimes of violence? So now we are on the third factor of bias social theory, which is genetic perspective. So genetic perspective cause the major premise is that criminal traits and predisposition are inherited. The criminality of parents can predict the delinquency of children. So the genetic perspective strengths is explains why only a small percentage of youth in a high crime area become chronic offenders. So let's formulate the questions. What do the results of sibling and twin studies show? Or a contagion effect? So the last factors of biosocial theory is the evolutionary perspectives. So evolutionary perspective cause as the human race evolved, traits and characteristics have become ingrained. Some of these make people more aggressive and predisposed to commit crime. So the strength of evolutionary perspectives explains high violence rates and aggregate gender differences in the crime rate. So it's also explained why violence is often driven by evolutionary and reproductive factors. Some have evaluation of biosocial trait theory. So when it comes to criticisms, if there are biological explanation for street crimes, then by implication, biological theory says that member of groups are biologically different, flawed or inferior. That there is also a lack of adequate empirical testing. So when it comes to response, rather than suggest that there are born criminals and non-criminals, proponents maintains that some people carry the potential to be violent or antisocial, and that environmental conditions can sometimes trigger antisocial responses. Next, trait theories that I will discuss is the psychological trait theories. Psychological trait theories involve the factors of psychodynamic, behavioral, and cognitive, which address social learning, mental illness, and crime, personality and crime, intelligence and crime. So, let's view psychological perspective on criminality. Watch this. Spend 24 hours anymore hours with you You spent the weekend getting even oh. We spent the late nights making things right between us But now 
now it's all good, babe. Roll that backward, babe, and pay me close. So the last factor we considered in psychological trait theory is the intelligence and crime. So the question is, what is the difference between nature theory and nurture theory? Do you think IQ and crime are linked? And if so, why are there more male than female criminals? Or why does aging out occur? So that's the end of my video tutorial. I hope you guys enjoy. So once again, I'm Francis Ray Cibardo, and this is my end of my video tutorial. Thank you guys.